it is a reflection of the crisis in the body of Christ. Everything, he says, contend for the faith. I believe that it is the same mandate that God gave Gideon when Israel was under the oppression of the Midianites. And God gave Gideon a mandate. He sounded a trumpet and Israel gathered. That's the same trumpet we sounded this time and all of us are here tonight. Give God praise. So I told Doc about it, what God said. And uh, I began to just prepare a website, not knowing really what God will do. But everything God spoke to me, I put it on a website called networkofchurches.org. Everything he says, I put it there. Everything I say. Then getting to the middle of the year, he says, this is going to be your first program of network of churches. There are three times that I commanded my people to gather in a year. And um, uh, those three times, I bless them. In the same way, I'm going to be blessing churches, blessing my children. I'm going to bless them. I'm going to give them a corporate blessing that is going to go to their churches, uh, go wherever they come from. And um, it's, 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 it's a humbling experience that God will give you a mandate. And I thank God, and I want to thank all of you here today for joining in the 21-day fast. Let's give God praise. I want to appreciate all the pastors who have made this a reality. Pastor Kofi, Pastor Rubin, every, every, every church that is represented here, every believer that is represented here. Let's give God a big clap. Of and tonight... Dr. Bing is in our midst. He has a word from the Lord. He is the senior pastor, founder of Open Door Missionary Church in Maryland. But most importantly and dear to his heart is the fact that he is the president of Pure Word Bible Institute. He is a profound teacher. If you're thinking of attending a Bible school, if you're thinking of attending a Bible school, if you're thinking of attending a Bible school, which will lay the foundation for what God has called you, especially if you're called into ministry, that is the school you should attend. The website address is pure-word.org. Pure-word.org. Amen. Let's give God a big clap, Paul, for him. Amen. Um, I noticed Bishop Prince Hamphill just came in. All the way from England, UK. So he comes with flair of London. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, I knew several years ago through Bishop um, Bob Hoxton. Amen. He's a dear friend of the late Bishop. Let's give God praise for his life and his ministry. Amen. He'll be ministering out here tomorrow night and, um, and Sunday morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, um, tonight, uh, uh, Pastor Ruben is a resident pastor of the house. Let's, let's acknowledge. Let's acknowledge him. He couldn't make it last week, but today he is right. God has graced him to be here. Yeah. And uh, get ready. At some point, you are going to play that trumpet and sound the jubilee for us. Yeah. So get ready. Uh, Pastor Kofi, the apostle of prayer is in the house. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he has a heartbeat for intercession, warfare, and, um, and um, I just enjoy I just, I just enjoy um, um, how he has, um, he has led us through various uh, kinds of intercession and um, victories and breakthroughs in the realm of the spirit. Amen. After uh, uh, um, Doc has preached, uh, let him take us through a short um, uh, uh, period of intercession. Amen. Before I, I continue. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you, are you excited to be in the house? Are you ready for the word? This guy, let me call him a guy, 
He's my father, so <laughs> I can mess with him. You cannot. Don't call him a guy. For me, uh, 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 I have enough points with him. <laughs> I have extra credit with him, so I can call him a guy. This guy is, is, is awesome with the word. Amen. He's, he's, he's a teacher, a great, great teacher of the word. And I'm not going to say too much about him. God has given him a word. Let's receive with a standing ovation to Jesus, my father in the Lord, a general in the land, Reverend Dr. William Obeying Dakum. Praise God. Thank you. Well, glory to God. You may be seated in God's presence this evening. Praise God. I said praise the Lord. God is a good God. Can I say that again? God is a good God. Sure he is. Amen. I want to thank God for the opportunity to be here again and to share fellowship with you. This uh, weekend being the uh, your 21st, end of your 21st uh, day of fasting. How many of you feel the presence of God with you? Yeah. Amen. And so we do thank God for that. And uh, please don't lose this blessing. Yeah. There's one thing to have what to receive, and there's another thing to maintain what you have received. I counsel you to guard jealously what you have received because you can lose it. Um, and I don't want you to lose that. And I don't think you should lose the reward as well. Are you listening to me? So I want to give God praise. Um, I also want to thank God for Dr. Ken Wally. Um, <clears throat> Because we are still working and we haven't, we will be winding up and, and handing over this church to you understanding much, if you know that. So I don't want to say much because we are still working. So I just want to keep quiet a little bit. But let me say this, that uh, when crisis started coming here, I was not the first person to be conducted. To be contacted, it was him, because he was the spiritual. He is the spiritual father of uh, the former pastor of the church. So the elders contacted him, the pastor himself contacted him, and for several weeks and months, he was dealing with the case. But as it went on, he felt no. I should speak to Reverend Oben Dako. So he brought the pastor to. Maryland, and that's how I got involved because he invited me. And uh, so we have tried to do, or we are trying to do a good job. Yeah. But he is doing a much better job. Yeah. And I hope you agree with me that he is doing a good, better job. So at the appropriate time, I don't want to use tonight for that, but at the appropriate time before March, I will come here again. And I will speak to you all before we hand over and uh, exchange the flags and the whatever. <laughs> oh, glory to Jesus. Um, um, I'll have the opportunity to share my heart with you. But let, please do know that we have about six more months to go. And so if, if there are things you can get, get it. Get everything that you can get. Don't be one day early. Don't be one day late. Because at times when we are done, you may seek to harvest like this, but it will not come easy. So now that it comes easy, please take advantage of that. Do you hear what I'm saying here? Yeah. Praise God. Thank God. Thank God for Bishop Hampel. We give God praise for you. 
um, I really want to speak from my heart. I hope you permit me to do that. Because I don't want, I want to leave a blessing here. Apostle. <laughs> I want to leave a blessing here. And uh, if you have ears to hear, I would like for you to hear that. All elders and bishops and priests and pastors and what are the other names? I want you all to hear me very clear. And I want to talk to you about new levels and new laws. New levels and new laws. Anytime God raises you to a new level, he gives you a new law. You cannot take the old law into a new level. You understand what I'm saying? And so it's not enough to seek and to push for a new level because the moment you get to a new level, the laws change for you. Do you hear what I'm saying here? Also, for your information, I've started preaching. It's the way I preach. For your information, also, I would like for you to know that God is not a stagnant God. The Bible talks about moving from glory to glory. The moment you think that you have reached, that's when you begin to go down. Are you listening to me? Because, because there is more in God. There is more in God. At times, in recent times, as, as the Lord speaks to me from the, from the scriptures, I, I wonder, I said, it's like I've never read the Bible before. All these years I've been preaching now. I'm like, wow, how, how come? Because actually, the more you know, the, the more you recognize that you don't know. Because there is more in God. And please, this church, don't ever think you have arrived. It is only the beginning for you. There are some messages God has led me to preach in recent times. Make your next move in God. And I'll be sharing that with Power Chapel tomorrow. Make your next move in God. Then don't be contained. And then excellence, the key to your next move. But this one is new levels, new laws. Deuteronomy chapter number four. I will try to cut this message short, so listen carefully. Perhaps it is one of the most important, if not the most important message I can ever preach in this church. I consider it so. The most important message I ever preach in this church is what I'm about to preach. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse number 5 and verse number 8. Can you put that on the screen for me if you have that? Today I want to preach from the screen. Is it there? No, not yet. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 5 to 8, and then Genesis chapter 12, 1 to 3. I want to speak freely from this too. Quickly, praise God. Anybody have found it? Okay, anybody find the stand up reader? I thought you always would come on the screen. Okay, not today. Okay. Yes, read that. Are you Evelyn? Yes, sir. Hmm. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verses 5 through 8 Yes Behold I have taught you statutes and judgments Please follow this I have taught you statutes and judgments Even as the Lord my God commanded me So in other words what I taught you Are things that God commanded me to teach That ye should do so in the land Whither ye go to possess it And says you You are going into a land to possess it So when you go there do the statutes and the laws. Keep therefore and do them. Keep them and do them. Are you listening? 
For this is your wisdom and your understanding. For this is your wisdom and your understanding. In the sight of the nations. In the sight of the nations. Which shall hear all these statutes. They will hear all these statutes. And say. They will say. Surely this great nation. Who oh, this great nation. Is a wise and understanding people. Take notice people. of the word great. This great nation. Is a wise and is understanding. Is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great? For what nation is there so great? Who have God so nigh unto them? Who have God so near unto them? As the Lord our God as is the Lord in all our things. Lord God is in all things. That we call upon him for. That we call upon him for. Uh -huh. And what nation is there so great? And what nation is there so great? That have statutes and judgments. That have statutes and judgments. So righteous as all this law. So, so righteous as all this law. Which I ha which I set before you this that, day. Yes. Genesis chapter 12. Uh -huh. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes. Now the Lord had said unto Abram. Now the Lord have said, had said to Abram. Get thee out of thy country. Get thee out of your country. And from thy kindred. And from your kindred. And thy father's house. From your father's house. Unto a land that I will show thee. To a place that I will show you. And I will make of thee a great nation. And now, shh. I will make of you what? Great. Can I hear everybody? Can I hear everybody? A great nation. A great nation. And I will bless thee. And I will bless you. Thank you. It's all right. Now, the call of Abraham was not only to become a father of many nations, but God said, Oh, make out of you what? A great Can I hear everybody? A great nation. A great nation. God does not make us one of many. God makes us a great nation. Never be one of, but rather be one among many. When God said, are you listening to me? I'm preaching, folks. When God said, I'll make you great, we have to understand what that word great means. Because he said, I'll make you a great nation. The original actually means, I will make you a unique nation. Or distinguished nation. You are not going to be like the other nation. You, you, you are going to be unique. Your greatness is in your uniqueness. The greatness of your business is in its uniqueness. The greatness of a church is in its uniqueness. The greatness of your family is in its uniqueness. God says, I will make you. It's not something you can do yourself. Are you listening? I think I'm preaching good now. God say it's not something you can do yourself. He said, I will make you. And when we allow God to make us, we become very unique. One among many. Because God doesn't duplicate things. Oh my God. Are you listening to me? I mean, you got to help me so I can pour those things out for you. God doesn't make duplicates. Can you imagine how many people are on the face of the earth, but none is a duplicate of the other. Not just the 8 billion right now, but since Adam. God is so powerful that it is against his nature to duplicate things. Oh. Even, even the days that we live in, God doesn't duplicate any day. Every day has never been before. You know how once in a while you go to a shop to buy a new dress. But you've had some nice dresses. You know what you do? You take them to the cleaners. And they clean for you. God has never taken one day to the cleaners. For, for, for it to be clean 
and brought back to us. Every day is a brand new day. It has never existed before. And his mercies are also new. Do you know that since Adam, God's mercy has always been new with each day. God, God wants us to be unique. God wants your ministry, your church to be unique. God wants your business to be unique. That is some of the problems we have when people come from another church and then they want uh, 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 this church or your church to be like the other church. We can't be like other churches. Ah, you heard what I said. You, we can't be like other churches. The sin of Israel was that they wanted to be like the other nations. But God, God, when God gave Abraham that promise, he didn't say, uh, you'll be like, he said, you, I'll make you a great a nation, a unique nation, distinguished from the other nations of the world. Don't try to pattern yourself after anybody. Amen. Don't try to be like anybody. Don't let this church be like any, any other person's church. God has given you unique people, unique pastors. Do you hear what I'm saying? It is out of your uniqueness that you can be a blessing. Because if what you have is what everybody has, who then are you going to bless? Oh, I, I want to say a lot of things tonight. Can you take that? Yes. Shh. Out of that uniqueness is when we become a blessing. Don't preach like any other person. Preach like yourself. I remember my daughter when she was young. Five, six years. You say, Jasmine, who do you look like? She would say, I look like myself. And all this time, I'm trying to get her to say, oh, I look like daddy. No. She says she looks like herself. I said, who told you that? She says, daddy, I know that. <laughs> and that really was like a slap in my face. But that is the point. Don't try to look like anybody. Don't try to act like anybody. Be the person God created you to be. When God said to Abraham, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll make you a great nation, he wasn't talking in, in terms of size. He didn't say, I'll make you a big nation. Because Israel is not big. Come on, are you listening to me? He wasn't saying, I'm going to give you resources and riches. No, because we know. That it is not so. But God said, I will make you a unique and distinguished nation. Amen. Is somebody listening to me? Amen. Now, God called Abraham alone, but God's plan was to make him a nation. You don't become a nation one day. See, some people hear prophecy and then they think that next year, that prophecy is going to come to pass. Oh, God says I'll make you a millionaire. millionaire. Ten years have come. You are not even a thousand year. <laughs> a thousand year is even a, a, a grace. You are not a hundred million. <laughs> but it doesn't mean that prophecy is not correct. When God, you see, God knows the end from the beginning. So when God is speaking to you, he doesn't speak to you your beginnings. He speaks your end. But after he has spoken to you your end, you don't start from the end. You must start from the beginning. 
And now when we start from the beginning, we are like, ah, but he said I'll be a great nation. Look at me alone. I'm even having it difficult to have a child. Because you have to start and go through what we call a process. But God will not abandon you. He will be by your side. With all your mistakes, he, he has a purpose for you. Glory to God. Woo! He has a purpose for you. He knew at every line and at every time, even the mistakes you will do. There is no mistake you do or sin you commit. That's a surprise to God. It's a surprise to your pastor and your friends. But not Jehovah God. He knew it. But still, he trusted you to give you a future and a hope. Amen. Can I hear amen? In the house? amen? Some people can't tolerate a mistake at all. And yet they are not Jehovah God. He who is without sin should be the first to cast the stone. But the one who is without sin, he says, neither do I condemn you. God, God accommodates us because he knows that if, if we will press on, we will come out of our mistakes and we will come out of our sins. Do you know Abraham made some great mistakes? He did. Are you with me? Abraham, I'm speaking from my heart. There's no point one, point two. It's just ahead. I'll, I'll come to point one, point two very soon. Glory to God, yeah. Those of you who like home electives, I'll come to point two one and point two right now. Glory to God. Hallelujah to Jesus. But we go through a process. I think the processes can be very difficult. I'm telling you, if you don't know that, the process can be difficult. But, <coughs> excuse me, you've got to keep your eyes. See the finishing line. There is nobody who had become what God planned for him to become who didn't have ups and downs. You know, when God showed Joseph his plan for his life, God told him the end. God didn't tell him the beginning. He saw his, his, his father and his children's, uh, uh, his brothers, uh, you know, bowing to that. That's the end. He, he's in a place of elevation. They are bowing. He didn't see them selling him. Did he see that? He didn't see himself in the pit. If he had seen himself in the pit. There's no, when the father sent him, I said, Daddy, I, I, I have some things to do. I have some homework to do. God will never show you the process. He will never even show you how you are going to begin. But he will always tell you the end. Shoo. I will make you a great nation. But he never told him at some point, you will not believe me, you will give birth to an Ishmaelite. God didn't say that. But did God know that was going to happen? Yeah. He knew that. I'm speaking to you who feel that, oh, for this mistake, it's okay. I don't think I can become what God wants me to be. I want you to know that God loves you more than you know that. Amen. At the end of your 21 days, renew your strength. Amen. Get up again. You are a soldier of the cross. Yes. When a soldier falls down, he gets up again. Yes. Let's keep going. The race is not over. Glory to God. Yes. For even when the righteous falls seven times, seven times the Lord will, will, will do what? Will raise him up. And even when he sits in darkness, the Lord shall be his life. He said, who are you to condemn another man's servant? Because his master is able to hold him. So Abraham went through a whole process. A person that God said, I'll make you a unique nation. Now, now he's sleeping with his maid.
13 years later, he didn't even have twins. If I'm going to be a mighty nation, I have to be born in seven, eight, nine, ten. He had Ishmael. He had Isaac. Isaac, Isaac gave birth to twins, Jacob and Israel. The promise was through the line of Jacob. Jacob gave birth to 12 sons. The 12 sons sold Joseph. Joseph went into Egypt. Later on, 70 from uh, 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 Haran or whatever went to be in what? Egypt. In Egypt, they multiply. Do you see? God is still working out his, his promise. Everything that you thought was a misfortune and Joseph had been sold and woo, God was working through all that. See, see, there is nothing that can stop God. If they throw you into the pit, that is where he's waving his plan. You read the Bible when, when Jacob, Jacob was told that Joseph was alive. You know what he said? He said, oh my God. What is this? Remember, Abraham went to Egypt and had problems in Egypt. So when Isaac was going to go to Egypt, God appeared to Isaac and said, don't go down to Egypt. So Jacob knew that. After Egypt, we don't go there. Now you are telling me, Joseph, that I have mourned is in Egypt. Joseph said, Jacob said, all these things are against me. Everything is against me. That night, the Lord, the Lord appeared to him and God said, don't be afraid to go down because I will make out of you a great nation in Egypt. And so, and so they, they multiplied in Egypt. Please understand. See, our lives and our churches and our business and everything we do go through processes. And most of the time, we are not able to endure the process. Are you listening to me? God calls you to build, build a big church. Or oh, I'm telling you, for 20 years, your church will be small. At times, once you build it to be big, bam, everybody goes. You are left with your wife and a little faithful ones. <laughs> but it's all part of your process. It does not change the promise. Glory to God. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Yes. It does not change the promise. What man does and what man does not do does not change the promise. Forever, O oh God, thy word is set. Is somebody listening to me? Now, somebody said they became a nation in Egypt. No. They were not a nation in Egypt. They multiplied in Egypt. But they didn't become a nation because there are certain characteristics of a nation. A nation must have a language. A nation must have its own culture. A nation must have its territory. Its geographical territory. Israel didn't have that. And so, for, and so for that promise of God to come to pass, God has to take them from Egypt and give them their own land. That is the new level. They have been in Egypt for 430 years or more, a little more. Now God says it's time to move to a new level. And so they journeyed for 40 years. And now, just as Ikobosin and Amahaya, now I'm giving you the point one, point two, point three. <laughs> just as they were about to enter the land which they will call their own, where they will have no masters, this is going to be our land. We have our language. God's promise to Abraham in Genesis 12 is about to be fulfilled. You know what God did? He gave them new laws. God, God 
did not allow them to bring the laws of Egypt into the promised land. You cannot be governed by the laws of Egypt and think you are a unique nation. Then you'll be like the Egyptians. God gave them new laws. Because think about it. Recently the Lord said to me, have you seen a nation without laws? And the Lord said again, he said to me, maybe somebody has said that before. I haven't heard that yet, but I guess maybe somebody. But the Lord said to me, say, the greatness of a nation is in its laws. Hmm. The difference between this country, America, and some other country that has no name is laws. It's amazing. Uh, Gandhi, the first uh, Indian leader said something. He said the uniqueness and the greatness of a nation is the laws that governs how animals should be treated. How animals should be treated. Do you know that here, you, even if you hit a dog and those, those a, a rat, you have to even go and report yourself. Because they take care. That, that is how unique this country is. I know some of you have tried to take, take these animals to go and do some light soup. Thank God the Lord was merciful. And you were not arrested. <laughs> but, but the laws... One of the things that was a greater challenge for me is when I came to this country. You know the four point stop when you're coming from here, from here? I mean, I mean there is no police officer standing there. <laughs> but when you get there, you stop. You stop. And nobody's, but that is the law. Can you imagine if that law was not there? Can you imagine the kind of accidents that would take place? And the people obey the law. You see how orderly it is. This person goes, this person comes. But one country I know. <laughs> it has no name. But this person, this car comes here, stop. Another one comes there, stop. And then they get out and they begin to insult themselves and fight. Then you hear the people, people. Think about that. I remember several years ago in uh, 1986, evangelist, in, not in that country, evangelist Billy Graham organize something they call Amsterdam 86 for young evangelists who are coming up in, in uh, third world nations. They wanted to help train them, support them. So they gave scholarship. A lot of people went. I didn't go. But this story was told me by one of uh, our seniors who went. They hired a plane. Now, after the whole conference, can you imagine that pastors, men of God, women of God, apostles, prophets, bishops, who have represented our country. Look at the doorway to the plane. Everybody wanted to enter in at the same time. <laughs> These are apostles and prophets, priests, pastors, and everybody's forcing their way into it at the same time. And this white ladies in Amsterdam, 18 years, 16 years, who are working at the airport, they had never seen anything like that. <laughs> that. So you can't wait and go in one by one. So 
some people wanted to go and sit in the by the window. So, so this lady said, "Oh no, this is inhuman! Stop! Stop!" And the evangelist said, "Come on, go are you there?" A place where laws are not obeyed. They are not unique. Our greatness can never be developed without proper laws. The people who live in this country and the blood that goes through them is not different from the blood that goes through these other countries I'm talking about. But the laws of this country, as you obey them, it changes you. I remember my first time in United Kingdom. My brother had been there like 13 years then. And I went to visit. That was my first ever trip abroad. I was shocked. How, what they call the underground uh, tube, eh? you call them tube. I mean, look, a lot of people standing in them. Friends, when the train came, as if nobody touches the other. Everybody goes in. There's no pushing. I mean, that used to surprise me. As if somebody had taught them that when the train comes, wait. Let the people in come. There's no police officer. Everybody stops. The people who are getting that gate before the other people. Look, it was like revelation to me. Because where I come from, once the people are coming, the others too. Is somebody listening to me? And so, just as Israel was about to enter the promised land, the first thing God did, he gave them new laws. Oh, that's a great blessing. I mean, I don't have enough time this evening to tell you about 600 and I think 12 laws. Do you know, God even didn't want them to eat the way the Egyptians eat. He gave them laws governing their diets. It wasn't meant to be religious. It was meant to keep them healthy. So they don't become sick like other nations. When you read that, don't, don't make religion out of that. He gave them laws how to treat each other. I mean, some of the dietary laws he gave them, you think it's, it's just because that makes you pure and holy. It doesn't make you pure and holy. It makes you healthy. Some, some, some animals in the sea, he, he told them, don't eat it. You know, you know, in recent times, as we also try to study a little bit, they, they tell you, oh, these kind of creatures, they, they, they eat up the, the, of, of this, of this. Now you can see why God says don't eat it. He wasn't making religion out of it. He wanted them to be a nation healthy, strong, living long. And so he didn't want them to eat the way the other nations ate. He didn't want them to treat themselves the way the others did. He gave them laws concerning how they have to treat each other. He gave them judgments. He gave them ways how they should approach him. Think about that. Now this is it. Now Moses, Moses tells the people, as you get into the land, remember I have taught you laws. As God, God commanded me. Observe those things. Do those things. He said two things. Look at verse number. Evelyn, help me. Look at verse number six. Ooh. Keep therefore and do them. Do them. For this is your wisdom. Shh. This is your wisdom. 
and your understanding and your understanding in the sight of the nations in the sight of the do you know the nations are going to look at you they are, and they are going to say wow these guys are different look at them their, their elders grow old they they do this they do that look at their nation look at the way they treat their 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 uh uh land you know god didn't want them to even use chemicals to treat their land he told them when you when you farm in the land allow the land to follow for seven years agricultural laws because he wanted them to be totally different your uniqueness are in your laws a lawless people can never be unique that is why in some countries and some nations that have got great potentials but they never observe any law so their potentials never come out. Homes must have new laws. Amen. If you are a parent, teach your children that there are laws in our home. You know, you, do you know, are you with me, friends? This doesn't look like church, but it is. This is the most important message I've ever preached here. Do you know that people who turn out to be very outstanding scholars go to their homes? They were put under laws. They'll tell you, you have to sleep by this time. It wasn't because they were punishing them. They know that you need this number of hours to sleep for your brains to develop. But go to other homes where their children sleep any time they want. I don't want to be under any law. You have to be. Homes must have laws. Churches must have laws. Your business must have laws. Because, because that is what is going to make you unique. This is your wisdom. And this is your understanding. In the sight of all the nations. Now, two things I want you to see here. Two things. The nations are going to come around. Evelyn, help me. The next verse, verse 7. And, and this is what the nations are going to say. The rest of the nations are going to say, yes. For what nation is there so great? Do you see that? Who? They are going to say, wow, what nation is there that is so great like this nation? Who have God so nigh unto them? Do you see their uniqueness is the presence of God? Two things. One, they have the presence of God. Keep God's presence in your homes. Amen. Keep God's presence in your life. Amen. When you seem to lose that presence, Confess and be restored. That is what is going to make you unique. Listen, pastors, keep God's presence in your church. There's no nation. Wow. Other nations are going to say, wow. There's a presence in this nation. Wow. There is a supernatural element in this nation. Is somebody listening to me? Listen, we don't come to church for showmanship. We need the presence of God. Amen. And let me tell you something. If you come to church and God's presence is not here, go home and watch television. It's a waste of time. Those of you who are told to lead prayer, prepare before you come. And this new dispensation, Pastor... Let me just speak from my heart. Pastor Ruby, listen, as you take over this, we hand over to you, make sure people prepare before they come. This is not showmanship. If you want to be a showman, go and build your own platform outside and, and do anything you want. But make sure if who takes offering, who leads worship. is Listen, it's the presence of God that makes the difference. One time, God told God told. Uh, uh, Moses, he said, uh, 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 my angel will go before you. 
Moses said, God, don't, don't go there at all. If you are not coming with us, we won't go. We don't, we don't need angels now. Your presence. Amen. He said, Lord, if you say I found favor in, in your sight, then do some. God says, my presence will go. The presence of God, Jehovah Shammah, is what makes the difference. Amen. Always seek to have God's presence in your life. Oh, glory to God. Seek to have God's presence in your business. Hallelujah to Jesus. I, I know these guys in, in Maryland and, and, and they have an African store, shop. I'm telling you, at the time that people's shops were collapsing, their shops were growing. Because they covenanted with God. They come in and pray in the spirit and make sure that that whole uh, 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 store or shop or whatever they call it is filled with the presence of God. That is what makes the difference. Don't ever get to a place in your life where you think that you are better than God's presence. As we came here, it's the same songs that other people sing. We didn't sing a song that people don't sing. But the difference was in the songs. The difference was that there was a presence. Come on, give God praise for that. That's the difference. That's the difference. Glory to God. The presence of God. I hear a man cry, Lord, cast me not away from thy presence. Lord, cast me not away from your presence. Glory to God. How do you understand that? So, the uniqueness of this ministry and this church and all other churches that are here, keep God's presence. It's the presence of God that heals the sick. It's the presence of God that drives away demons. It's not what men are seeking to do and men are, are trying to use their physical strength to do. My God. There's a difference between doing something in the flesh and doing something in the spirit. Are you listening to me? Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Am I, am I preaching good here? If you are asked to come and preach, take time to pray. Don't go and look into somebody's book and get sermons and come and preach. It will be in the flesh. Prepare. Wait upon the Lord. See, it's this presence that is going to take this church to the next level. That's when people are going to say, wow, what church is there like that church? That has the presence of God. The nations around you are going to commend you not because maybe you have something they don't have, but they sense a presence in that country. May God's presence remain with you. Amen. May his presence remain with you. May his presence every day in your, in your churches, in, in, in your homes, in your businesses, in your own personal life. In your own personal life. May that presence of Almighty God Oh, glory to God. Now, give me the last one here. Verse number, is it eight? And what nation is there so great? And what nation is there so great? That have statutes and judgments so righteous Ooh! as all this law. Which so, so number one, their uniqueness and greatness was due to the presence of God. Number two, now I'm preaching now. The, oh, glory to God. Now I feel the anointing. Glory to God. But I was preaching from the beginning also. So then, so then, so then, the second reason that makes a nation, a people, a home great is what? Statutes and judgments so not, righteous. Is their laws. You can say. We'll come back, we'll read Acts, and then I'm going to stop here. A church. Without laws will not succeed. That is the problem. And, and please, I, I'm just sharing from my heart. Because I don't come here often. So when I come, I have to 
I have to talk to you like a father would talk to his children. The uniqueness and the greatness of a church is based on the laws of the church and how those laws are observed. Some people say, we are a church, we don't need any laws. You need laws. New levels, new laws. Even God gave this new nation laws that even if somebody's goat is missing and you see it, how to treat it? Do you think that's a spiritual law? There's no spirituality about it. He showed them even how to behave socially. In our church in Maryland, I have laws. Clearly written. Every leader must know. If you're a leader, you gossip about another person in the church, you lose your position. I'm telling you, you must know that. Because we are not going to allow the enemy to come in. We are not going to allow strife to come in. We are not going to allow, and then it becomes a problem in the church. See, churches of our type, our type of churches, don't talk about anointing. We have anointing. You have anointing. But we are not, we don't observe the laws. Everybody does what they please. Everybody does what they think should be. And so every time there is break, 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 break. That's why we are not unique. As we come into, after 21 days of fasting, I challenge you, obey the laws. Otherwise, you are going to lose everything you have worked for. If you begin to cut each other and consume one another, what you got in 21 days will go down the drain in two days. You will use two days to lose what you have taken 21 days to get. If you begin to quarrel and become angry, and, and instead of walking in love, you begin to walk in not hatred, but hypocrisy. Let me tell you something. All the joy that tonight we have experienced here will just take one hour to dissipate. So don't let anybody come spoil your spirit. One day somebody tried to talk to another leader in our church about the situation and the, and the person told him, you know, here in this church our pastor teaches us not to pull our nose into anybody's problem. He said, until somebody invites you into their issue, don't talk nose. So, so I don't want to talk about it. The person couldn't talk about it anymore. We don't want three people meeting here and discussing that, four people meeting here, talking that, five people meeting here. After 21 days of fasting, you will lose everything. The uniqueness, the greatness of a place is, is how they observe the, those little regulations and so forth. They tell you this is the way to do it. Do it that way. There are some churches you go to, they don't have anointing. They don't even pray like we pray. They don't dance like we dance. They don't jump like we, we jump. They don't sweat like we sweat. But the church is doing fine. Oh, you don't know that? Because they obey the rules. In this new level and this new time, we got to obey the rules. Amen. And let me tell you, Pastor Rubin, you got to be strong. Amen. No matter who, he said to Jeremiah, don't be afraid of their faces. No matter who, if they will not walk by the rules, and you got to have some rules. Rules for choristers, rules for ministers, rules for this, rules for that. Soft ones. But it's very important. That is what will, as everybody observes it, you see that there will be so much peace. People come to you and say, 
So you don't have troubles in your churches. Oh, no. Our people, they know. We don't do this. They know what we do and what we don't do. If a person have a problem, who they go to? When you have that, you will see how quickly this church is going to turn around. Otherwise, you will pray 40 days and lose it in four days. It is not only the anointing that moves a church to a uniqueness, but observing the laws. That's why God said, now that you have become a nation, I'm going to give you new laws. Don't bring the Egyptians' law here. I am giving you laws. And, and listen, to this is, these laws are going to be your wisdom. People can say, wow, no doubt. No doubt church is so nice. No doubt church is so peaceful. No doubt people come to church and they stay. And so when you get somebody gossiping about the other person, make a public show of him. But before, put it in the law. What we do here and what we don't do. We love each other. I said we love each other. Amen. Let love be the supreme law here. Amen. Am I saying something good here? Amen. Get the anointing. If we can get the anointing and get the laws and put them together, the devil cannot come through that. Amen. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Amen. Let me explain. Come to the book of Acts. Let me just give you that one and then I think. There are some more things to be done. But I love you all with my heart. Amen. This is a good church. Amen. You have good people. All of you are good people. But set your heart to obey the laws of God. As a pastor in our church, I don't poke my nose into anybody's problem. People can, do you know so and so is going through this? I say, I don't know. If you don't invite me into your problem, I don't come into it. I already have enough problems of my own. <laughs> oh, oh, you say I'm not a good pastor. That's okay. I don't have enough time. Do you know that even the sun, the moon, and the stars, God made laws for them? It's only in the church. That people don't want to obey laws. You tell people if you want to marry, this is the procedure and it is there. People don't want to obey that. But when they are in problem, then they want you to come around. I don't come around like that. Acts chapter 60. Let me close on Acts chapter 60. I think I've said enough. Amen. How many of you think this is enough? Amen. You love that? Praise God. Thank you. Acts chapter 16. You see, at times, at times, you want to really bring something so sweet, something so nice, something that will make us jump up and down. But before you can do that, you've got to make sure that every hole has been what? Sealed. So that what you give to the people will not be lost. I don't want you to lose the blessing. We don't want this church to go through another crisis ever again. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Glory. Acts chapter 16, right? Verse number 4. As they and as they went through the city, they as they went through this, Paul Timothy, as they listen to this, as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees. Do you see what they delivered? The decrees for to keep, for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. So you see, the apostles and elders in Jerusalem wrote down things. How the the culture, the behavior. What to do? What is acceptable? What is not acceptable? Are you listening to me? Yes. Hello? Yes, Hello? 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 
what is acceptable, what is not acceptable, what is permitted, these were all part of the decrees. It's not only doctrinal things. And so they went through all the cities and they gave them to every church. This is the document. This is the document. This is the document. We are going to leave some documents Amen. in this church. Amen. Our labor is not going to be in vain. Amen. We are not going to leave for everybody to come do what they want to do. That's right. Amen. I want you to know that. Amen. Deliver them by the apostles. And elders. And elders. Which were at Jerusalem. Yes. And so were the churches established. And so. Were, and so. Were the churches. Were the churches. Established, established. In the faith. In the faith. And increased in number daily. And increased in number daily. Is it like they were praying and casting out devils? No. As they observed the decrees that have been observed. This is the result. We want growth. We want establishment. And now this is not only for church. This is for your own personal life. Kofi. The churches walked in decency and in order. If there are no law, there can be order. Everybody will do what they want. When Paul said, let everything be done in decency and order, he was talking about the order is the arrangements. The law, that says, this must be put here. This person must sit here. This is that. Everything must be done in, in a decorum, in, in a decent manner, and according to the arrangements. But I'll tell you something. We who have the power don't have the order. We don't have the law. And so the enemy always comes through that. Pastors, we are not obeying the law. We know accounting practices. We are not obeying that. And then when somebody says, we say, well, we don't have to say it. If we will submit ourselves, there will be great peace. There will be order. And the churches will grow. My desire is that your church should grow. Amen. You who have got personal businesses. Recently, I understand you did some business show and all that. Set rules. Little, little rules. As it grows bigger, you grow. Even your workplace, are they not lost in your workplace? Can you imagine? Oh, we have come to work. Why should you set laws? Can you imagine what would have happened? Be begin. Every leader that comes to church late, put them at the back. I'm serious. Otherwise, this church is going to be a late coming church. Every leader must be there on time. Do you hear? This is the most difficult part. Making the laws and executing the laws. But if you don't do that, you can't control anything anymore. People come in at 7.30 and 8 o'clock, they are crying that the church should have closed. I'm sorry to say this. With, with all the respect and the love I have for everybody, we are a people that are lawless. As a pastor, times, some people have come to me asking me questions which I don't have any business talking. Oh, so, uh, Pastor, what did Sister so-and-so say? I said, that's not your business. That's not your business. That's between me and sister so and so. Don't use the pastor as a gossiping agent. If we can do these things, now the place is quiet right now, but, but I sense a great anointing here right now. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Praise God. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. What, what are you saying? Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I said, thank you, Lord. Amen. And I'm not talking about hundred, but little, 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 little things. And teach them. 
because we want this church to be this way and that way. And so let all of us endeavor. In our church, if you're a leader, you are coming late. If I don't get a call from you or a text explaining why you are not in church at that time, you can be sure that position I'll let somebody else take it. I'm telling you the truth. So gradually, we are coming out of a certain mentality. We are not there yet, but you can see that some people used to come to church late. Now they are lining up. Then we can close on time. Then we can feel God's presence. Every time you move to a new level, you need new laws. I don't know if you understand that. I pray God in the name of Jesus. Now, listen to me. Let me say this. These laws are meant, are not meant to suppress anybody. The laws God gave to them were not meant to suppress them. He said, this is your wisdom. This is your understanding. People are going, people are going to say, wow, you people are wise. So you, you work and then one day out of the week, you don't do anything. No doubt, every time you people are strong, you can work more. That's wisdom. But we, we, we work eight days. <laughs> we do overtime. Because we are building houses in our hometown. And so we build, we, we, uh, uh, there is a, oh, oh, I'm here, boss. You have worked Instead of resting, coming to church, and joining the fellowship of the brethren. Hey, who don't like money? I like money. So, so, over time, I'm here. You have three over time waiting for you. From here, you go here, you go here. You know, most of the time, these people, and I'm sorry to say that, I, I don't mean to be insensitive to anybody, please. But most of the time, some of these people, after they have had all their money, they fall sick. I know some people, after they've built all their house, the moment they go home, they, ask, they die. Did God know why he said, work for six days? He said, seven day rest. And let me say this. You know, God was so serious. He said, anyone that broke any of this law, stone him. Because that defeats the purpose of what I want to make. Out of that nation. How many of you understand that? Husbands and wives make few laws. Don't let your wife stand outside and insult you. That's wrong. You never do that. A woman who does that is a shame. You have a problem, talk to your husband at home. Don't, don't go discussing your husband with somebody else. And the same thing works. Don't go discussing your wife. If you have anything to say, talk to your pastor. Hmm. What a message for 21 days fasting. <laughs> you know why? God wants us to sustain Amen. what we have had. He wants us to keep it. We don't have to go back into confusion. We don't have to. We refuse to go back to confusion. In our church, you can't disrespect the pastor. That, that will be your end. Because if you rise up against the pastor, what have you done? You can do that. You have a problem, you can go to the pastor. But you can't really. Even if you go and talk, some people have tried to, and the answers they got, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't. One day, somebody came to me, Pastor Dr. Ken, gave, sold me a seed of some two hundreds of dollars. I was wondering because this person has never done that before. Not knowing she's gone to six and the person put her in order to say, You can't do that. 
You see, the pastor we have here, he doesn't allow for things like that. And here, our leaders don't do this. You have a problem, talk to the pastor himself. I think that this woman thought that the case was going to come before me. It did come. I was told. But he decided to ignore me. So all of a sudden, she tries to be nice. Giving me seeds of dollars. And I thank God for that. Now she's coming around. That is how it ought to be. This church must be strong. This church must be bounded by love. This church, you, you must submit to your elders. Elders submit to the pastor. Let this be done in an orderly manner. When anybody comes in here, like when we came from wherever we came from, when we came to America, we realized that America, you can't do nothing. If you owe five dollars, they will pay somebody hundred dollars to get the five dollars from you. You will never get away with us. Even if you die, they will take your credit and you'll pay that five dollars. <laughs> you can't just ignore him. When you go to jail, there are, there are leaders, bank officials, all kinds of people. They broke the law on tax. They, they put them in. Pay a penalty for that. You see why this nation is great? And they can have enough to give to other people. If nobody were paying their tax, they wouldn't have enough. I pray God in the name of Jesus. Listen, always check the, 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 the tithe. Every leader who doesn't give their tithes, let him lose his leadership. Where, where, where your heart is, your treasure will be there. Where your treasure is, your heart will be there. Don't let people come in here playing leadership, but they are not putting their money here. They give their money to Benny, it's wrong. He said the tithes should be brought to his home. When you are sick, Benny will not come to the hospital. Has Benny cancelled you before? And the pastor who cancels you, not even so, Pastor, God bless you. I just fell on this. We're going to teach you this. In our church today, when I preach, like today, somebody will put something in an envelope and say, Pastor, God bless you. I was blessed by you. At times, the people who count the money, they come and say, oh, this was in the open with your name on it. The person said they were blessed by that. It didn't used to be like that. We got to, we got to show gratitude. We got to show love. See, I'm saying these things to you because God is shooting the church to a next level. Amen. You have come from crisis. Don't go back to crisis. Don't let the things, little, little ingratitudes and, and, and this person beat me and this person, don't, don't let those things anymore. Don't let them come in here. Amen. Let the name of the Lord be glorified. Live like brothers, true brothers and sisters. And you see the mighty hand of God. Absolutely. So were the churches established in the faith increasing number. Bow your head, everybody. Join your hand to somebody's hand. I know some of you have never fasted before, but you did. You did your best. You did your best, and God bless you for that. But, friends, there's nothing like going to fetch water with a leaking basket or a leaking uh, a bucket. The efforts are in vain. Our effort must never be in vain. What God has released for this church must remain and it must bring increase to rebuke the hand of the enemy. Not the church is represented here. Let there be genuine love amongst us. 
want to pray in the name of Jesus, that shortly before I pray, that we will not lose the blessing. Whatever it takes to seal those loopholes so that this church will be a unique church. Your business will be a unique business. Whatever you are doing will be unique. Set the laws for yourself. Obey them. Submit to them. Your wisdom is in those laws. In not keeping those laws. Your skill, your understanding, your ability to go forward. The days of lawlessness are over. Amen. Just let's pray together. For the churches represented here. It's a new order. It's a new day. Come on. Come lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. This is my heart desire is for this church to, to become all that God wants it to be. Kinetica church, that God, whatever God has ordained for you, we are not going to go and break and grow and break. No. No. We want to pray that 21 days, all that we have gained, the spiritual impact upon our individual lives will not be lost. Oh, in the name of Jesus. New laws. New levels. New levels. New levels. New levels for this church, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Our Father God, we want to thank you. Here we sit in your presence. We know our shortcomings. We know our weaknesses. We do know our mistakes. Things we have said that we shouldn't have said. Thoughts we have thought that we should not. Words spoken that we should not. We ask for forgiveness. We also ask for cleansing. Oh, Kabasaya. Deliver us from the things that are hessing us. Right now in this church, right now. The things that may be blocking us. Holding us back. From making major strides. Those openings that have allowed the enemy to come in. Lord, as we, we bring this special consecration. To an end. Help us to seal all the loopholes in this church here, in the Connecticut church, in Power Chapel. Father God, the misgivings that we have about one another, let those misgivings melt right now. Heal us again, Lord. Restore us again. Let there be love amongst us as brethren. Love without hypocrisy. Genuine love, Lord. Let the canopy of your love, the canopy of your power, help us to forgive one another. As you have forgiven us, Jesus Christ. Ah. There is no place for lawlessness. There is no place for the unruly. There is no place. But we walk in the law of God. So the Lord, our uniqueness will come for you for all the other churches. We thank you. Help us to submit to the word. Submitted to the leadership of the church and our churches. Even submitting one to another in the fear of God. Let the joy we have seen this evening continue with us. Let the presence that makes a difference continue with us. And let your glory shine upon us. 
in a time like this. We thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hmm. Hmm. Mm hmm. Somebody say, hmm. Have you been blessed? Give God a big, big clap. Or, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's produce establishment and increase. Say with me, laws will establish us and increase us. Do you want to be established in what God has called you? You need what? Laws. Amen. A lawless people are a lawless people. Doc, it takes a lot of courage. Um, to, to speak this apostolic message it takes a lot of courage um, um, because the, the current status of the body of Christ is called lawless. Hallelujah. It's called what? Lawless. Disorderliness. And that's why churches split. That's why people do anything. People say anything. People behave anyhow. And that's why the glory of God, in spite of how much we pray, we are not able to sustain it. And every day we have to labor again, labor again, labor again, and again, and again, and again, and again. And yet our lives are in one place. One of the, one of the, one of the burdens of uh, Bishop Bob Hussain, who was the founder of Eagle's Nest and Jubilee, was that of order. That was of what? Order. And I believe that that's why God brought us in um, 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 to, to fix this foundation. And out of this mess, God is raising a platform for the body of Christ. And don't take it lightly. Could you sense the voice of that message? Could you sense the power in that message? Could you sense the authority? Now, it's not broadcast over and over. Our network of churches, ORG, will continue to play it when Jesus comes. Because that's one of the mandates of the network of churches, to contend for the faith. And that's why the platform has been raised. It's a platform. It's a what? It's a platform. And you're going to see that as we go forward, some of you, your dreams that were held back, you broken ancestral cases, broken generational cases, and yet you are dead. One of the things God is going to use this platform to do is to release ministries, release businesses, release release people into the global dimension that God has called. Oh, you don't know what's coming. It's so powerful. It's so awesome. You know, I, I, um, I have been working with Doc for a, a, a time now, but, you know, tonight, I feel like when the charismatic move began. How many of you used to listen to him those days? Good. Yes. You, you were actually in Central. So you know some of you heard him in those days. How many of you feel that power tonight? You know, I've been looking for that power in your voice for years now. This platform restored it in Jesus. It, it, it is because of the platform. You see, God sends us. And when we obey, obedience upon obedience, layer upon layer, and then restoration begins to do what? To come. Um, um, Pastor Kofi is going to take us through a few minutes of prayer um, 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 to push us to the next level. Amen. There's an altar here in the spirit. The Lord is doing things. This voice is going to travel. It's going to heal pastors. It's going to heal churches. It's going to fix things. Oh, 
sha, 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 sha. Give God praise. Welcome, Pastor Kofi Kudo. Oh, give God praise, 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 give God praise. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are grateful to God. Amen. We thank God for the life of our Dr. Ken Wally. Hallelujah. For being a vessel amen hallelujah we we believe that we have been set up here for a, a time like this amen hallelujah and we want to uh, surrender to the decrees of the apostles amen that we will see this work increase and expand as um the doctor was speaking tonight i realized that we have two things we need to pray about hallelujah and this prayer is for those that have covenanted with god that as far as and as long as they live they will not see the church suffer hallelujah i want men and women who are ready to covenant with god you see when when the people came to david and he said we want to make you our king david looked at them and said look look I know if you come in peace, and they say yes. And he said, Before God and man, if you overstep bound, may the curse of God come upon you. And they said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That means they agree that David will be king, and they are there to make David's kingdom increase and expand. Hallelujah. So those that are here, that you have set your heart up to, to confront with God and say, As far as I'm in this ministry, I vow that this ministry will not suffer the same things he suffered. You are, you are welcome to pray this prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. You are welcome to pray this prayer. We have just two topics. One of them is to pray and, and tell God. The Bible says, was so everything he asked of God in the name of Jesus. He will do it to glorify the Father. We have been asking for cars. We have been asking for buildings. We have been asking for properties. But uh, tonight, you want to ask that God will strengthen you to covenant with him and to and you set your heart that as far as you have been called and anointed and brought into this ministry, you vow that at your watch, this is ministry. Sir. Shall we pray in the name of Jesus? In the name of Jesus. Father, we've heard your word. We've heard your word. We've heard your word, and Lord, tonight we make a vow and we speak that vow before your throne, before God, a heavenly host. Father, we decree and declare that your church, your kingdom, your ministry will not suffer at our watch, at the call, at your play over our life. Tonight we declare in the name of Jesus, by your help, by your help. By your help, by your help, by your help, by your help, we ask for help. We ask for help. We ask for help. That in the name of Jesus, we will be, oh God, the tools in your hand that this ministry will not suffer. Your church will not suffer at our watch. In the name of Jesus, grant us, grant us the ability, grant us the know-how, grant us the strength to be able to stand to this. This vow, remind us of this vow by your spirit in the name of Jesus as we surrender to your will, we surrender to your will, we surrender to your decrees, we surrender tonight in the name of Jesus. Makato Shabaya, Ribato Shabaya, Ribato Lobaya, in the mighty name of Jesus, beloved. Hold on, it's like some, some of you don't understand. In, in, in the Old Testament, in the book of Samuel, the Bible said, Hannah vowed. He said, when you give me a child, I will give him back to you. The moment that vow went forth, God said, okay, you are acting like me. So I'll see to it. If you honor the vow, I'll honor, I'll bring that honor unto you. The Bible said, it's, it's not even right for you to vow when you can't honor it. It's all, it's all good. But you see, when you place yourself in a vow, you are saying, God, I can be faithful to this vow. Lift up your voice. God will help us. 
you said you are asking for help. He said the ability does not come from us. The moment we ask, he give us. That at your watch, this ministry will not suffer. Lift up your voice. In the mighty name of Jesus. Our help comes from you. Jehovah is your name. Therefore, we ask for that help to be able to be the tools and vessels to stand at our watch. We decree that this church will not suffer. This ministry will not suffer. In the name of Jesus, you will help us. You will guide us. You will grant us the help we need to stand as vessels. That this ministry will not suffer. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mandoli Biriatayaba. Riba Tobi and the Boa. Riba Tola Pandebeluataya. Mekwatali Barando Lobo Sataya. Indolo Lobo Sitariana. Rakabus Tabi and the Hoba. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We receive strength. We receive wisdom. We receive knowledge. We receive understanding. In the name of Jesus. Let the man be aware tonight. Let the seed begin to grow. In us, in the name of Jesus. Grant our ability to bear fruit of the seed that has been sown. By your word, in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I sense throughout the fasting that there's been a release. And if I've released, I've received a release, I know you have received. Amen. When the man of God's mouth said, New levels, new law, it just dawned me that new levels can come and we'll be still looking at old levels. There is something that holds us to the old. And that was to keep us to the old. But tonight you want to free yourself from the old. And open yourself to the new. You see, when Joseph had a dream. And he had a sheaf. There was a harvest. And the brother's harvest bowed before his harvest. He did not tell Joseph that he's going to be a farmer. He did not tell Joseph that. But you see, if we keep looking at the old and we have a dream, we think God wants us to serve. Hallelujah. We are praying for our standing. Hallelujah. That we will flee the old and enter the new. The Bible said when Elisha was going to receive a mantle, he took off his old mantle and put on the new. Hallelujah. We want to pray in the name of Jesus. God knows the old mantle. You are praying that God will cause the old mantle to be removed and that the new mantle will come upon you. New mantle is responsible for your new level. New mantle is responsible for you walking in your new level. Your new level, as the man of God said, will be different from other, other people's new level. Yours is, is uh, distinguished. It, it, it is different from any other. So as you pray, God will release that new level. Shall we pray? As we free ourselves from the old mantle, free ourselves from the old level, into the new level, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, we break away from the old. 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 And we welcome the new. We welcome the new. We embrace the new. In the name of Jesus. We take off the old mantle. And put on the new. In the mighty name of Jesus. 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 Shadabali Bahataya. Likwa to Luanda Rabasata. Rika Telebuata Yababa. Randolobosite Ibaha. Oh, we receive the new. We receive the new tonight. We receive the new tonight. We receive the new. In the name of Jesus. We receive the new. 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 In the name of Jesus. Shadabali Bahanda Labahaya. Shandala Ruata Labahaya. We receive the new tonight. We receive the new tonight, O Jehovah. 
In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. As the new comes, if you fear, fear is going to leave you. As the new comes, if you if you put a responsibility, the new comes with new ability that will be responsible. Uh, spoke to me. I was just quietly and I, I was just sitting after prayer. And the Lord said, It's only a serious farmer, father wants increase. After seeing a seed, he still goes out the field to check whether the seed is coming out. And to do that, you always have to visit the place and check the field, check the field, check the field, check the field. And in the kingdom, it's the same thing. Those that want to see increase uh, have to be what I call, for lack of the better word, be inquisitive. You have to be inquisitive to be able to ask God and ask God about what you are called to do and what you are called to, I mean, op your operation. You need to talk to God. God, this man I see is anointed to do that. What is my portion? What is my operation? We need to ask God because this is a serious sign. Hallelujah. I want your hand lifted. Father, we thank you tonight. All power belongs to you. We have heard your word. And from tonight, if we were lawless tonight, we have heard your word and we comply to your law in the name of Jesus. Tonight we know that it's not only the presence but also the law. The law, Father, as you release the laws, you say you shall give laws and you will put them in our hearts. Tonight our hearts are open. Let Akayaba in the name of Jesus let the Lord be sown as a seed in our spirit tonight. Oh, this ministry will not suffer. This ministry will expand in the name of Jesus. For the people of God have gathered to observe the laws of the Lord. We thank you that you have heard our voice. And the Bible says, as you have heard our voice, you have answered already. We thank you for answers. We thank you, O oh God, for what you have begun. For it is a good thing. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise and glory. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Before I leave, <laughs> I just want to introduce the leadership in the Jubilee. My wife told me, you got to do it. You got to do it. And I want this. Um, I want to introduce the elders. We have Elder, Elder Bernard. I don't know where he is right now. Elder Bernard. And Elder Carol. Hallelujah. There she is at the back. We have our deacons. Deacon Joe. Hallelujah. Oh, let them come forward. <laughs> Hallelujah. We, we want you to come forward. Amen. It, it is important. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Elder Bernard, Elder Carol, Deacon, Deacon Veronica, please come forward. In the absence of my wife, who is also the elder of the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. They have been a support. They have taken good care of their pastor. I'm telling you, they take good care of me. I want you to just applaud and me. I'm thankful. Amen. I'm thankful to them. I thank God for their lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Righteousness have been done. I have observed righteousness. Please be there. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Let's give God praise for Pastor Kofi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm. It has been layers upon layers tonight. Amen. Amen. Um, we're going to raise that altar right now, and I'm going to speak into... Um, speaking to where god has brought us um when we start on the seventh day of this uh, 21 day fast um i asked the lord um what do you have in store for us and um he said to me leviticus chapter 25 
he says i'm bringing you into the jubilee somebody say with me jubilee now last week we had the opportunity to pray the seven points of atonement and the seven points of the jubilee and um uh, i was um watching the the video it's on networkofchurches.org and um i i'm like i have to listen to this over and pray with this over and over the presence of god was so thick in that video uh, as we were uh, consecrating ourselves like a high priest would do uh, altar we 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 consecrated the seven parts of our um existence and then we also went to deal with those seven areas where we could be in debt got uh, seven releases uh, uh, seven years, seven times seven um, will give you 50 years with Jubilee. But in the book of Leviticus chapter 25, there, there is a Sabbath. Say with me a Sabbath. Seventh day Sabbath. The seventh day Sabbath was significant of rest. To rest. And then in Leviticus 25 also, it talks about the seventh year release. Say with me, release. Every seven years, God granted a relief from debt, release from bondage. Amen. And then seven times seven, we come into the 50th year. The 50th year is for land restoration. Say the land restoration. That was the Jubilee. So the, the, the first seven was for rest. The second, the seventh year was for release. And then the 50th year was for restoration. Say rest, release, restoration. Now you need all these three dimensions moving forward. You know, when God said Leviticus 25, you know how he revealed it. He spoke the word. He showed me like you hit um, a bump. You know, um, I don't know how to say it, but let me use this pulpit. He said, you have hit um, a, a, a kind of a full stop or a, or, or a blockade. You have entered into uh, um, 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 a wall. You have entered into a realm, a dimension. I can't just use, I can't find any word in my spirit to just articulate it, but into you have rammed into a jubilee that's what the lord showed me i don't have the words but it's like you've entered there is nothing beyond this point it is the jubilee you've hit the jubilee that's how he showed me in that vision and in leviticus 25 all the three are there rest Rest from what? How many of you are tired of struggle? How many of you are tired of laboring? In Hebrews chapter 3 and chapter 4, he says, he says, labor rather to enter into his what? His rest. Say with me, I possess. Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 4. That means that from today, every day, God is going to give you a word that brings you into your word, your rest. You see, I gave an example on Wednesday um, of a man who, you know, came on a visit to New York to look at the Big Apple. And um, unfortunately, he found himself in a bad alley. There was a cop's line somewhere. The cops came around. They thought he killed the person. And so they took him to jail. All right? In New York. No, it's just a fabrication. I'm just trying to explain a little bit 25. <laughs> you can see Vero's face. <laughs> All right. So they take him to jail. And uh, eventually he's cut loose. He served his time. But he's not from New York. He came all the way from Texas. All right? He just came to look at the Big Apple. Now... He can make two decisions. Now he's come out of jail. He's broke. He, I mean, he doesn't have any money, but he's free. 
he can decide that, wow, I want to stay here in New York, look for a job, you know, try to build my life here. But how many of you know that you cannot be a king in a land that is not your own? You cannot be a what? You cannot be a ruler. You cannot be appointed governor of the state of New York, no matter how hard you work. No matter how much you gain. So the smart thing to do is to start to go back to where? Texas. Now, so this guy could say to himself also that I'm going to go hang around a Home Depot. I'm addressless, jobless, moneyless. Somebody will come hire me for today. And when I get the money from the daily job, I'm going to the evening, since I have no sleeping place, we'll head to the Port Authority and jump on a Greyhound bus. That can take me, I can afford, not all the way to Texas, but perhaps to Pennsylvania or Philadelphia. So my night rest will be in the bus. In the morning, I will be at um, Philadelphia and look for the next Home Depot. Stand outside, get a job. Work myself out when I get the pay. I'll buy some food from my stomach and go back to the station and go from there to Virginia. Now, that is the journey of the Jubilee. When the year of Jubilee comes, God says, return. Return. No matter where you've been held captive, Everybody holding you in captivity because you desire to observe the jubilee, to go back and possess. That slave master is going to catch you loose. That person you owe is going to catch you loose. You're going to be released from the jailhouse, but you must go back to your family. Go back to your possession go back to your land go back to your territory go back to your space just like the doc preached the land of palestine was promised to abraham all the time but god allowed them to go into a situation so they will multiply and then they will come back and you see in the journey, there were a lot of people who didn't want to go back because they kept on thinking back. Thinking Egypt, the cucumbers, and the leeks, and the garlics. It's a tough decision, but in the coming year, the blessing that support us for this 21-day fast is to go back to the place of promise, to the place of inheritance. There is a place where God has designated, you are queen, you are king. There's a place where a spouse is waiting for you. And that is what the Feast of Tabernacles was about. The Feast of Tabernacles, Leviticus 20, he said, during that feast, what you're going to do is that you're going to take four kinds of trees and you're going to build boots. In Leviticus 40, he says you will take luxurian trees. You will take palm trees. You will take leafy trees. And then you will take elos of the brook. Leviticus 25, 40. Now, you can see it on the screen. I want to show you something. When you go to Genesis chapter 2, Verse 9, in the Garden of Eden, the same order. When God planted a garden and placed Adam, the Bible says that he put trees pleasant to the sight. That corresponds with luxuriant, flowery, beautiful trees. Then, Leviticus 25, 40 says, Palm trees. Palm trees produce food. Palm fruit. Edible. 
You go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 9. He says, trees good for food. Then again, back to Leviticus 25, verse 40. He says, trees, leafy trees. In other words, cedars of Lebanon, leafy trees, big, thick trees. When you come to Genesis chapter 2, verse 9, he uses the words, the tree of life. And then the last one in Leviticus 25, verse 40, he says, is that verse 40? No. He says, willows of the brook. When you come to Genesis chapter 2, verse 9, he says, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now let's match them up. The first one, which is the tree pleasant to the sight, that speaks of our emotional destiny. Say with me, emotional destiny. You can call it your, your, your soulish destiny. We are three, three, uh, um, uh, threefold human beings. We are three dimensional human beings. It speaks of your relationships and relationships. The tree good food is the tree that speaks to your body. Your body lives on food. And um, it's after you are finished taking care of food that you want to think of clothes and uh, other things. It all has to do with your finances. That's your financial destiny. Say with me, financial destiny. So the tree good for food speaks of your financial destiny. Then the third is the tree of life. The tree of life speaks of our spiritual destiny. How many of you know that in, in heaven we make it to heaven or we are recognized in heaven not for how many cars we own here on earth, not for how many women we married, not for how many children we, we, we birthed, but we recognize in heaven for our service in the house of God. That speaks of our spiritual destiny. That's why everyone must find something to do in the house of God. Hallelujah. Otherwise, in heaven, you'll be a nobody. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that is the tree of the carnal mind. The mind has a place in our lives, but not the carnal mind. The mind must be subject to our spirit, as God dictates our spiritual destiny, we execute what God says within the framework of a renewed mind. As God reveals our financial destiny, as we seek him for where we should prosper financially, we execute what God has said we should do within the framework of what? A renewed mind, the mind of of Christ. As God reveals our emotional destiny, we execute it within the framework of God, a renewed mind. That's why in the Feast of the uh, Tabernacles, you took trees that represented all this fall that was in the and you dwelt inside. And God says, the reason is that I want you to remember that when I took you from Egypt, I made you live in temporary boots. And it didn't fade you. I didn't leave you in the wilderness. I brought you to the promised land. In other words, if you have in Christ with your emotional destiny, crisis in marriage, crisis to even find spouse, crisis with the relationships around you, then it means that you haven't found the seed pleasant to the sight. Because the tree does not grow unless a seed is sown. The seed represents the purpose and the promise of God. I had a tough time to get married. Every girl I liked didn't like me. And, a girl, and every girl who liked me, when I put them before God, he said no. I got very frustrated. 
But it led me to God. And I asked God. He began to study the scriptures. And God showed me this revelation in Genesis chapter 2. And then he said to me to seek him for a word. And strangely, it was right there in Genesis 2. He says, it's not good for a man to be alone. The day I got that scripture, that's when victory began to come through for me. Today, I have the best wife on planet Earth. I tell you, if I any of those beautiful girls, they would have left me. But this ugly man stayed with me. You know, some people indeed think I married her because she's beautiful. And I said, no, God gave her to me because I prayed. I prayed. I prayed that seed. I nurtured it. I asked God questions and I trained myself, prepared myself for the seed. I want you to know that in the community, if you don't have a spouse, if you are having crisis in your marital destiny, tonight is your night of destiny. You are taking back your emotional destiny in Jesus' name. God is going to give you space. God is going to give you territory. God is going to move your life forward emotionally. That's the first stop we're going to pray. We're going to pray for five minutes. Listen, God has given us a word to go back to your family. It doesn't matter where they are. This year, every step you take on a daily basis in obedience to the leading of the Holy Spirit will bring you emotional rest in Jesus' name. It will bring you emotional release in Jesus' name. Every debt, spiritual debt, for which reason you are not married, the leading of the Holy Spirit will bring you to full circle. You will be released from that debt of emotional, marital shame and dysfunction, family dysfunctions. Listen, this is a year of healing. This is a year of restoration. Are you ready to pray? rise up on your feet? That's the first thing we're going to trust God for. If you're a nursing mother, you can sit down. If, if, you, if, you, if you're tired, you can sit down. But please, five minutes. This, this is when we are entering into destiny. This is what God is going to do as we pray this prayer. He's going to release a grace upon you. To go back to Texas, to go back to California, to go back to your space. In your space, you are never going to be married. In your space, you are not going to suffer emotional frustration. In the coming year, every leading of the Holy Spirit is to bring you back into your space. Next year, by this time, you are going to be having unusual testimonies. Are you hearing me? But you are going to dwell in the promises of God. Tell somebody, God said, it is not good for you to be alone. To be alone means to be frustrated emotionally. Let's pray. You will have a word. You will get a word. Let's do with some music. in Jesus' name. 
anointing flow through me hey i know flow through me oh. let the power of the holy ghost let the power of the holy flow flow through me anointing anointing flow anointing flow through me i know Flow through me, oh, the Flow through me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost, power of the Holy Ghost, flow through. Anointing flow, anointing flow. Let's sing it for the last time. Anointing flow through me, anointing. To me, Pastor Ruben, get the trumpet. I know, flow through me. Let the power, let the power of the Holy Ghost flow. Anointing flow, anointing flow. Oh, come on, everybody, sing with me. Anointing flow. The Jubilee is released by the sound of a trumpet. For a second, he, he's just going to be blowing sounds from his inside. And I want you to receive that sound as, a, as an instruction from the Most High God. Wherever your spouse, your brother, oh Jesus, I shared a testimony on Wednesday. Of how two uncles of mine who who I have spoken to for 20 years. Hallelujah. When 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 I finally had release, I had a release this week to give them a call. When they heard from me, they were screaming, they were dancing. These are older uncles, older uncles. They said that we have heard your voice. Oh, God has visited us. That we have heard your voice. Because when God called me about 30 years ago into ministry he pulled me out of my family don't attend anything don't respond to anybody don't call a that's the price i'm paying for the anointing upon my life it's jubilee it's jubilee it's jubilee are you ready lift up your hands into heaven God is releasing your space to get back your husband, to get back your children, to get back your relatives, to get back family, to get back your wife, to get back your husband, to get to get your family, to possess your family, to possess your emotional food. Hey! 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 Let's go. I know flow through. Let the power, let the power of the Holy flow through me. Hey, I know flow through me. Now listen. What you have received right now is an anointing to obey God to experience rest emotional rest emotional release emotional restoration say with me 
I have received emotional rest, emotional release, and emotional restoration. If you believe that, give God a big clap of me. Flow through me, hey, hey, I know. The next one trees good for food. Oh, tell somebody I'm getting back into my garden, into my space. The tree good for food. Somebody say financial rest, financial release. Financial restoration. Woo! Let you begin to pray right now. Financial anointing flow through us right now. Anointing flow. Anointing flow. Let's lift our hands and worship. Anointing. Anointing flow through me. Oh, let the anointing flow through me. Let the power, let the power, the whole flow through me. Through me, I know flow. Begin to blow right now. Let's receive it. It's our financial jubilee. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Give God a praise of praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. The third, the third blessing of Tabernacles and of the Jubilee spiritual restoration. Say with me, spiritual restoration. Spiritual release. Spiritual rest. Every member of our household shall be saved in Jesus' name. The power of witchcraft of our families is broken tonight. The power of the occult, Freemasonry, the forces of darkness, principalities, the reign of our churches, the reign of our lives, authorities, dominions, rulers, every force of darkness, every satanic entity. We will all find fulfillment doing something for the Lord. We will all take up our priestly mantle, evangelize, witness, proclaim the gospel. Hallelujah. Do something to the glory of God. That's our spiritual destiny. That's, that's the reason God will give us crowns. When the apostle says, I've fought the race, I've, 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 I've run the race, I've fought the fight. There is a crown that is reserved for me. He was speaking about a tree of life. Are you ready? You shall bless some spiritually. Are you ready? Begin to release. 
begin to release your spiritual space, your spiritual garden, your spiritual, your priestly mantle. We're going to change the sun. Fire, fire, fire. Fire fall on me. Fire, fire, fire. Let's go. Fire fall. Like the day of Pentecost. Like the day of Pentecost. Oh. Fire fall on me. Now, now, listen, 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 listen. This is no joke. I want you to sink. I want you to move. I, I mean, you're not dancing for me. I want you to take that that revival fire. God just dropped that song in my spirit. And we want to do it. Please dance like crazy because it belongs to you. You are no longer going to be cold. You are no longer going to be lukewarm. You are going to be on. Fire, 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 hey, hey, hey. Holy Ghost fire. Fire, 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 Oh, 
of Pentecost, fire fall. It's called a shout of rain. But it shall revive Shall revival. Revival. Shout it again. Revival. Somebody shout it again. Revival. Give the big club offering. The last one we're going to pray is a renewed mind. Say with me, renewed mind. Say with me, renewal. 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 A lot of us, the problem is where? In our minds. That has become the stronghold of the devil. And it plagues us, it hinders us from staying power with the revelation of the Spirit of the carnal mind Adam and Eve aborted their residence in the garden of Eden that's what the enemy manipulated their mind has God said has God really said uh, are you sure that God spoke to you are you sure are you sure that God will come through that was the essence of tabernacle for once you have to dwell in the promises of God has he promised? Shall he not do it? Has he said it? And shall he not make it good? That was the only one time that they had to leave within the framework of the promises. I wanted to do something. When you go home, every promise of God, write on a poster and place it on the walls of your bedroom. That is the essence of tabernacles. We must live within the framework of the promises of God. If God said he will give you a husband, you're going to get it. If God said he's going to give you a lot of money, you're going to have it. If, if God says I'm going to make you the head and not the tail, you're going to have it. Every promise of God, write it on a poster and paste it on the walls. Of your bedroom that is your booth when you wake up it's in your face write the promises of god in your phone let it be home page let it be in your face god has said it i'm going to have emotional prosperity i'm going to prosper financially i'm going to prosper even in the church in my spiritual function Write the promises of God. Live in that booth. Tabernacles is not just for one time. This is when we reinforce. This is when we remind ourselves. And then now we go back and live in our what? In the booth of the promises of God. Shout hallelujah. We're going to pray. This last prayer. God give me a renewed mind. Let's pray. Rabostana brustala brustele brustan boshia rabada brustala brustia brustala by. No, 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 what? This one is called warfare. Drag the devil out of your mind. Fire! Rapapa, papa, 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 papa. You're a bit of work, and body, 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 body. We evict the serpent out of our garden. Rapata, 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 rapata. We cast down imaginations. We cast down imaginations. We cast down every hard thing that exalts of itself against the knowledge of God. We take captive every thought and subject it to the obedience of Christ. And we punish every disobedience. We rebuke disobedience from our mind. We release our mind from carnality. We free up our mind from the influence of the kingdom of darkness. We release our mind. We release a renewed mind. Mind. We release the mind of Christ. Rabada breshte beshia, rabada breshte lebe, rabada breshte leboshia, rabada balari alahia, rabada breshtia. Shout hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lift your hands into heaven. Come, Holy Spirit, and take.
your place. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, and take your place. And take your place. We honor you. We honor you. We welcome you. We welcome you. We worship you. We worship you. Come, take your place. Come, take. Your we honor you. We honor you. We welcome you. We welcome you. We worship you. We worship you. Come take your place. Come take your place. We honor you. We are you. We welcome you. We welcome you. We worship you. We worship you. Come take your place. Come take your place. We are you. We are you. We welcome you. We welcome you. We worship you. We worship you. Come take your place. Come take your place. For a mi minute, they will still keep playing that song. But everybody, just sit down for a minute. We're gonna bring our. We're gonna. We're gonna. Trust God. The number Jubilee is 50. The number Jubilee is what? 50. This evening, every one of us is going to have an opportunity to sow for your family. Sow for your what? For your family. You want your family to experience the jubilee. Some of us, God will convict us to sow $50 for our families. Some of us, God will tell you 100 He showed us to me. Some of you, God will tell you to sow $150. Just obey the Spirit of the Lord. Just obey who? Spirit.